Hello, everybody out there in interweb world. This is Martha Beck coming to you from darkest Africa. Actually, there's nothing dark about Africa except the nighttime because it's like 8.30 here and it's another o'clock maybe where you are. Or maybe not. Maybe you're in the same o'clock. Anyway, it's nighttime, Sunday night here. And we are just now getting around to, get to recording the gathering room because we've been spending the whole day, the gracious badger and I, um, talking to amazing people who have come to the seminar in the savannah out here and driving around beautiful Londolozi looking at amazing creatures and landscapes and basically the Garden of Eden. And I've talked before about the concept of fractals. And I think what I talked about on the gathering room was that what we become, we're like crystals in a super saturated solution. A crystal starts and then other crystals adhere to it and it makes itself larger in predictable patterns, well, somewhat predictable patterns. It's called patterned disorder. And all of nature is organized this way. Um, everything is very much like one tree is very much like another, but different pattern disorder. So I talked about that, how what we do and what we put out into the world fractals around us, a social group. And today, while we were buzzing around the savannah, I was thinking about how we very much fractal what we are in every level of our lives. And today I want to talk about life mission because I briefly got to hang out with a woman named Kate Groch whom I've known for many years. And Kate is a South African who grew up under apartheid. Um, and then I think when she was in college, the apartheid system came apart and she became very committed to creating unity in the country and racial balance and everything. And for that reason, she really wanted to become a force for education among rural Africans. So rural black Africans, she was a Caucasian, African. And so she said, you know, she set up out to become an educator and she started getting training for that. And she started working with rural peoples. And you have to remember that when she was growing up, no contact was allowed interracial contact. It was, it was much worse even than in the U S where God knows it's bad enough but it was forbidden under apartheid. So she was really crossing boundaries and she learned all these languages and was devoting herself to education. And then she met um, a family that was restoring ecosystems and also wanting to help rural peoples in Africa sort of husband the wilderness and bring it back from destruction into its natural state. So she hired on for them as a tutor and flew all over the world and all over Africa teaching these two Caucasian kids now, um, Boyd and Bronwyn Varty, all about everything, like literally all about everything. They would, you know, to learn about social stratification, they'd go to India and study it in a very dramatic context. And to, you know, to learn French, they went to Paris to learn. They went, they went everywhere. They rode camels. It was not a usual schooling, but it was amazing. And it created some beautiful minds while well, it developed some beautiful minds. And then there came a time when she was, uh, Kate decided she was going to go back to the rural education. And she went to this place that is just it's in the middle of absolute devastation in what was grassland a million years ago. Um, more recently, it was totally destroyed by farming. And the San people who lived there, the tribe was just like ugh, enslaved, murdered, you name it, any atrocity, uh, that's what happened. So now the, the land was exhausted, all the white farmers left, and it left these impoverished local people. So she went out there to build a school. And this is, this is what I mean by you fractal around you what you are. When she got there, you know, she knows that the education of all people, but particularly children and women and girls, um, that has a very, it's the strongest tie to actually bringing a population out of poverty and bringing nations from developing status to, you know, a place where everyone has enough food, that kind of thing. So she didn't have any money or anything. So she decided to build a nursery school in this little village 
that really, literally, I don't know how the village keeps going. I don't know what the source of income is there, but it's something like $2.50 a month that these people have to live on. And she and some friends decided they were going to build a preschool to start educating the little children. So they borrowed a brick maker. They had $150. They made the bricks themselves. They stacked them up themselves. They built crooked walls, had to take them down, build them up again. And eventually they built a little school with dirt. And then they gave back the brick maker. And that's how she built that school. Then she, uh, when I met her, she was doing all this stuff, but she was exhausted. So as we try to give to the world, if we give too much, we exhaust ourselves. And then that which we can create around us is also exhausted. So right after the funeral of one of her dearest friends, she came to one of my coach trainings and it just ripped her emotionally open. Um, I thought it was really brave and wonderful. She was shocked. But she went in and by God, she was healing the divisions in herself. She was bringing up the, the little child of her own past and, and loving and educating that child. So that was a fractal. Then she adopted a little baby who, you know, who knows what life Maya would have had, little Maya would have had if she hadn't been adopted by this woman. But in this one child, Kate poured all the love and all the idealism and all the brilliance that she is. And now Maya's 11 and she's gorgeous. And she's, when she was one, um, I went to the airstrip here to fly back to America. And Maya was one and Kate was there with her. And Maya, oh, she must've been two because she was talking, but she was still in a diaper, tiny, tiny. She said, why do you have to go back, Martha? And I said, well, I have to go back to tell everyone about Londolozzi and to bring more friends. And she thought for a minute, and then she said, well, that's just fantastic. And in this little precise, like, South African accent. And she's just like, now when I talk to her, she's very artistic. And when I we talk about painting, and she's like, my peer. And like, I watch this thing blossom. That's part of what Kate has created. And then she's off right now. Um, my One of my partners, Karen, went off to... A, a town called Hazy View, where Kate has put together this huge learning center where thousands upon thousands of children have come in. This is part of, partly why I'm here. We we, we contribute to this. Um, and they have this big like warehouse-like building, but in the middle of it is a tree that's meant to look like a marula tree because marula trees are where the learning happens in traditional African villages. But this tree is made out of cement and wires. And the wires that come out of it are for iPads and computers and all the highest technology. And the the kids who come in, you guys, oh my gosh. I remember going to a classroom in South Africa, in rural South, South Africa, 20 years ago. And it was literally three students trying to sit on one each chair, teachers who didn't know actually really did not know the the subjects they were teaching. And the kids just sort of dead-eyed, staring out the window, wanting to leave. Then I went to the learning center that Kate helped set up and directed. And it came opening time, it was 10 o'clock, and all the workers there were like, stations! Everybody goes to different learning places around this around this tree so that they can be there of assistance to the people who come in. And then a bus comes up and these 10 year old kids come pouring out of it like, like a herd of wildebeest that's been spooked by a lion. I mean, they mobbed the place. They were like in there on the computers, on the iPads, learning stuff before you could draw a breath. And their test scores have gone like through the roof. And just the general feel of the, of the place is sacred, actually, sacred and wonderful. And I just wanted to tell you this story because this is one person and you don't have to be like her. I could never, never do what she does. She's putting up learning centers all over Africa now. I mean, I just, I don't even know what the woman is up to anymore. But that's her path and that's her fractal. And she's done it by living her joy and her ideals and having an imagination that, that says, if there is no nursery school, I will borrow a brick maker and make one. Like she is 
so committed to what her heart knows is her mission that she is always finding a way around any obstacle or any lack of resources or anything. And I've just watched her fractal in so many forms, create so many magical people, magical places, magical events. And she just gets bigger and bigger and bigger because she learned to find what matters to her and to do nothing else, really, to do nothing else, to intend that that would be her life, her livelihood, and her contribution to the world. So I'm just kind of having a little love moment with, with Kate Groch because if we could all just take a page from her book, if tomorrow we can just do one thing that heals us, one thing that heals another person, one thing that guides us toward or steps us toward a sense of mission, in this way, huge things happen. Brick by brick, we make our own bricks and we build the dreams that we were born with. So just wanted to give you a little inspiration from Africa. Thanks for listening. I love you guys so much. Can't wait until, oh yeah, can't wait until we can meet again in person. I think that will be soon. Um, to learn about Kate's work, by the way, or to contribute to what she's doing, you can, um, the, Rowan the Gracious Badger is going to put a link below this video so that you can go to the Good Work Foundation. So if the Good Work Foundation is Kate Brock in disguise, no, it's a fractal of her. And just when you look it up online, just know that this was basically one woman following her heart and just other people gathering to that. And it's like a train with no brakes. It's just going to get bigger and more beautiful. If every one of us lived a life like that, Holy smokes, you guys, we could actually save the world. I love you. Mwah, 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 mwah. See you later. Have fun looking up Kate. Mwah.